where National Geographic explorers, explorers Peter Arnett is standing by, and he was on the air last night when the first attack wave came. Peter, first of all, what have you been able to learn about the damage caused by that attack in Baghdad? Well, the information minister, uh, Al Sahaf, very quickly told us that President Saddam Hussein was not killed or injured in that attack and that he, he uh, alleged or he asserted that such tactics amounted to illegal assassination politics by the United States. What the uh, Iraqis are saying, however, that in one uh, series of missile strikes near the Aldor refinery, which was a target in the first Gulf War, there were civilian casualties, and late afternoon they took out two busloads of journalists to that scene we have still to hear from them. Peter, do you get a sense of where this 2,000-pound bunker buster bomb was dropped? We don't actually. I was on the... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this desert dust. Uh, we're under the impression it was to the north of the city, but the information minister is certainly not telling us anything about it or any location about where that could have been. What they are saying, though, the president was not hurt. They referred to an upcoming program, which we've seen, where President Saddam Hussein, you know, wearing, uh, wearing glasses, read a speech, you know, defi another defiant speech against the U.S. It was a taped speech, but it referred to events which clearly had happened since the early morning bombing. Uh, Peter, if I remember correctly, it was the early morning hours in, in this country. Uh, it was already daylight in Iraq. It was, it was uh, several hours after the first attack. We saw some explosions in Baghdad. It appeared to be bombs being dropped in Baghdad. You know anything about that, where those might have hit? No, I, I, I don't think uh, they were really explosions in Baghdad. I mean, we had the initial strike against this lo lo location of, of the leadership, then the work cruise missiles that were to the southeast of the city around the Eldor refinery. The, the, the impact area was, but I don't quite know what you're talking about. Sometimes well, I actually, these images, we, just, we, just showed these, we just showed these pictures on the air, and it was, I guess it was about 1.30 Eastern time. Um, I guess it would have been in, in, the, uh, in the early morning, and there was sort of an explosion. It appeared to be, we were talking about it, it appeared to be uh, looking east of Baghdad. Uh, a couple of explosions, a couple of balls of flame, and then it was over. It's hard to tell from this picture just how far away it is. And I know you, you've been trying to get some other information, so we're going to continue to pursue that. Let me, just, let me just ask you about the streets of Baghdad this morning and today. What does it look like? Before dawn, when the sirens uh, went off, absolutely quiet, no traffic at all other than police vehicles. By noon, still no movement in the streets, not one shop open. But at this point in the afternoon, around about 4 o'clock, much more traffic, stops, shops still closed, but more traffic, people moving around, sort of breathing easier, even though it's pretty clear, and they find it pretty clear, and every Iraqi I've talked to believes that tonight there'll be continuation of these airstrikes. Continuation of the airstrikes, are they now prepared for what we would, we've heard will be the shock and awe attack tonight? You know, this, this country's been bombed one way or another for the last 20 years by the Iranians and several times by the United States. I think they're prepared as they can be. They've got their supplies in, they're huddled with their family. You do have government officials and militia, the army's on alert all around the city now in government ministries. You have armed soldiers, some in uniform, some in not in uniform outside the Ministry of Information. There were, plain, there were plainclothes men with AK-47. This did not happen during the Gulf War, as a matter of fact. There's far more evidence of military in Baghdad now than there was 12 years ago. And of course, that war was primarily fought over Kuwait. Uh, uh, Peter, just give me a reaction to this sort of, the, what we've heard about this attack being called the, uh, 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 an opportunity for, uh, uh, that happened last night, as opposed to sort of the massive attack that we expected. The, the, uh, I, I'm not, the, if, if you're talking about, you know, were the Iraqis surprised by the, what essentially was the meagerness of the attack, you know, certainly there's a, there's a feeling of relief and a, a degree of jubilance on the part of the officials we've been meeting with here today. On the other hand, I don't think anyone has any doubts that the U.S. is capable of a much more dramatic, overwhelming attack. And they, 
they're, they're, they, they believe also along with the rest of us that will come pretty soon.